boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation, I'm your host, Alan Saki, and we are still at COFES, the Congress on the Future of Engineering Software for our second annual partnership with them. We are very excited to now be sitting down with Dr. Oleg Shulevitsky, hello. Nice to meet you, hello. Thanks for coming on to the show, really appreciate it. I'm very okay. excited to talk to you about Bill of Materials. This is a very interesting thing. Um, Open Bomb is the company that um, you are the co-founder and CEO of. This is the last three and a half years for you with Open Bomb, and also doing the last 10 years as well uh, as a blogger and social media advisor at Beyond PLM too. That's right which is very cool. So we'll, we'll be unpacking both of these things throughout the conversation. Um, Oleg, how did you get involved in engineering software and where, how did it like pique your interest and then how did you pick where you wanted to get involved? Oh, that's a very good question. This was happened a long time ago and originally I wanted to be an architect and somehow I also wanted to deal with computers. So many, many years ago, somebody told that the computer-aided design is actually when I can take architecture and computers together. So believe it or not, it was kind of 35 years ago and I'm still in this. So. And then when you were first, you know, 35 years ago, when you're learning that you can take architecture and you can take these designs and put it into digital form and then be able to you tinker with them in the digital space, what was kind of the, the moment for you that was like, whoa, this is going to impact so much? How did that? How did that come up, and where did you exactly see yourself fitting into the the picture? I, I, I don't think I realized it back those days, but in eighty, in in eighty five, in eighty six, so it was about AutoCAD that was uh, very easy and beautiful and run on PC computers. That was the only thing that was available for me living back in the Soviet Union. So that was kind of amazing stuff that instead of drawing on the desk the board, I was able to get. AutoCAD and do some stuff and then also do programming. So I, I think it's all started there yeah. and then it's got even more interesting with data and everything else. But yeah, as the tech has gotten better your ability to manipulate the digital sphere has gotten more interesting. Then how did how did it evolve then? You know, you've in being involved in this 35 years, how did it evolve over time all the way up until where you're at now? Uh, well, it evolved with the steps, so <coughs> I think it was not 35 years, I think it was a little bit el less, I'm not as old, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it's, it's, it's went in, in different uh, trajectories, so one trajectory was obviously technological, because I, like my roots are in technology, and that's what I was doing uh, when I lived in Israel for many years, I worked for Autodesk Resellers. And it's the first time that I realized it's not only about writing programs, but also going to customers and trying to sell them those programs. It was uh, my first kind of attempt to merge uh, technology and, and, and business because you need mm -hmm. to sell what you do. And then uh, second time I was working at the SO system and uh, as part of the challenge I was promoted to be a CTO. And uh, I've been told that you, we made great technology, but now go to customers and explain them. So that was, uh, that was a challenge to go to customer and explain technology. So that was the moment of time I started my blog Beyond PLM because I, I realized that to explain technology is a challenge by itself. So it's not, it doesn't, doesn't stop with the great technology. It's, it's actually just the beginning because you need to go to um, customers, potential customers, and sell them to this technology and explain them the value. So that was <coughs> that was the moment of time I also started the blog. Mm -hmm. And that was also a realization that the technology is as good as that can make it value for customers. And that's, that's where it continued. It's very important to to have that that moment of oh I translating what I'm doing here into uh, applications for real world purposes and talking to industry about how they can use it for the betterment of their processes is is very important. I'm glad you're identifying that and 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 with the blog then you're able to e get even more reach than just one on one conversation. But now you can go one to thousands and more with the with the blogging on the projects. So then, okay, so now we, are, we, we find ourselves you know, uh, doing Open Bomb, product-centric business tool for manufacturing. So you kind of went through these, the, this, the steps of seeing the, the, the field progress, and then you're like, I want to take reins and make my own. So teach us about that. 
Yeah, open bomb was also a discovery of the problem and finding a solution. And we are not done yet by any means. It's just a, just the beginning. It's just the beginning of the story. But the way it started is that uh, bill of materials. I have a passion because the bill of materials is so exciting. It's like everything around us. Like we can pick anything in this room. Like these cameras. See this ca oh no, yes. this camera, of course. But yes. this this chair has this a bill chair. of materials. Yes. And this so sofa far. has a bill of materials. And explain to us. And how your that sneakers. Looks like, yes. So also. Even these guys. Yes. yes. Even even these things. Yes, so everything yes. has bill of materials. So it's not all the same. It's not all brackets and plates and screws. Yeah. But. It's, yeah. it's all has bill of materials. Actually, the best way to explain bill of materials is food. Your okay. steak also has bill of materials. Your uh, cake has bill of materials. Because basically, you think about components and ingredients. You're taking them together. You're buying them. You're bringing them together. You're mixing them. You're baking them. And then you get the product. So think about uh -huh. this. If you think about manufacturing from that standpoint, anything is like food. Okay, so sure, and sure. The bill of materials, With recipes. <laughs> it's like a recipe, exactly. <laughs> so you think about this bill of materials, it's a, it's a, it's a lifeblood. So you cannot do anything in this world without mm. bill of materials. Some people like to call it, some people like to call it differently, but it doesn't matter. So that was the thing that made me really excited because that's that's the foundation. That the digital, like people call, people like to call it digital, but fundamentally it's about data. So it's a data foundation of everything that you do. If you don't have it, you cannot do it, you cannot plan it, you cannot buy it, you cannot assemble it, you cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning. And then I realized that many, many, many manufacturing companies, I knew it from experience, are ending up with Excels. And that was a really painful problem that I've seen for many years. And again, it's a well-known problem. But uh, the opportunity that I've seen is to come with a tool which is enabled by cloud technologies and enabled by new technologies that can make it easy and available and affordable for everyone. Uh, so if you think about this, the open bomb is an opportunity to many manufacturing companies to stop using Excel <coughs> and to start and collaborate using digital tool. So a typical prospect for open bomb is a manufacturing company, small manufacturing company that is having a process going from US to Europe to China. Mm. Because the, the manufacturing is different today. In the past, the Ford factory had uh, one giant factory that was making Ford automobiles. And mm -hmm. from the left side, you got iron and glass. And from the right side, it was coming automobile. Yeah. And today, it's all contractors, suppliers, and it's all global. Crazy. Uh, so, and uh, when small company can realize the power of internet connection and contract manufacturing and talents across the globe, they obviously doing it right, but here is the thing: then they taking bill of materials, placing them in Excel, sending them in the email, and got lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I sent my bill of materials to contractor in China, and by the time he got it, I already made a change. Change. And by the way, I also made a mistake, and I sent the wrong one, but I didn't yeah, yeah. realize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they are doing something, and I am doing something, and we completely not on the same bomb. So it's the open bomb is, is a so technology allowing you to stay on the same bomb. So everyone is on the same on the same data. Yes. So and that's the the, the one fundamental part of build materials uh, and the open bomb is a technology. Okay, I have a couple questions. First is it's so interesting hearing you talk about how Ford had one the the car manufacturing facility factory where you know iron and glass on one side car out the other side that's so interesting compared to now in the globalized world where it's now pieces and contractors all around that's so fascinating and then it's also very important when if you if you can't with the internet with this connectivity that we have now to have technology where we can make an update that goes live to everyone and not have these oops moments of oh I have the wrong bomb over on this side so okay now now teach us is is bomb the bill of materials is that part of the the product lifecycle management the PLM is that one part of the PLM how does the, how does that work. Uh, that's another great question because if you ask somebody about what is PLM, you from single person you can get two answers. It depends if it's in the morning or in the <laughs> evening. Now you're asking two people, you will end up with five. <laughs> so PLM is really uh, a discipline that is very hard to define because it depends on people. For somebody, it's a business discipline. For somebody, it's technology. For somebody, it's a product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So it's also, again, I want to come back to what I've been experiencing for many years. There are some people that just don't get it. And uh, the people that, uh, you know, the, 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 their objective is to make products and they cannot wrap their head around the comp complex definition of PLM. They just said, we don't need it. You know, I talked to small manufacturing companies, they said, we don't understand it, but they understand simple things. So the, the simplification, it's really big deal in my view because yeah. um, the, the complexity hurts people and I think one of the problems of PLM although it's a great idea brilliant technology and excellent companies it's way too complex for everyone and it doesn't work for everyone because of the complexity interesting it's very much oriented on a lot of uh, consulting it's very much oriented on the organizational change so it's fine but you know, it depends on who you're talking to. It depends on your customers. Like I said, if, if you need to explain the value of technology, you can choose uh, simple words. I mean, if you can choose simple words, why not? So people understand BOM. At least this is my conclusion for the group of customers that we are working with. Actually, the way we explain Open BOM is, the, is a <coughs> product-centric business tool is because we are not only doing BOMs. The recent, uh, <coughs> recent, recent addition to uh, Open BOM is ability to manage vendors and ability to manage purchase orders. Mm. So why so? Because a small company wants to have an end-to-end -end process. And for them, bill of materials, it's a res recipe for purchasing. And if they don't have this recipe, they don't know what to buy. Mm -hmm. If they have a wrong mm -hmm. recipe, they buy the wrong stuff. Yes, yes. So they, the cake will not be a cake, Correct. it will be something else. Yes, yes. <laughs> so from that standpoint, I, I think the, 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 the PLM is just probably doesn't fit the definition of every company. Okay, interesting. And then, because for, to me, someone that's, a, you know, very much a newbie that is trying to understand what's what's going on in the in the engineering software world, um, to hear the acronyms and then to be able to try and place them into where they make most sense is something that, um, you know, like we were discussing earlier, like you mentioned, it's important to make certain reductions in complexity to make the general public be more understanding of what's actually going on. When you give the example of a cake being baked with the with the bill of materials, this makes perfect sense. Um, that you need the right ingredients for the chair to be made or for the table to be made, the cameras, etc. So walk us through um, these industry examples. So if we do want to make chair, uh, table, tripod, camera, if we want to make this, we need we need our team then needs to use something like Open Bomb to be able to all have the right components to make the camera written down, sourced the raw materials from the right location so we're able to find where those are coming from, being sent all to the manufacturing facility where it gets assembled. You have, and then there's the, the CAD is also, the, 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 all the computer designs are also part of Open Bomb as well. So does Open Bomb cover this kind of like whole spectrum even to the customers? You were, ex you were giving us the example of the vendors at the very end as well. So can you give us what an industry example would look like? Uh, sure, <coughs> but the, 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 the thing that you need to realize is that your example is perfectly fine, but uh, generalized. Yeah. So the specifics, the, the things are different and devil is in details, especially when you come to manufacturing company. So you need to differentiate between probably three fundamental uh, type of manufacturing processes. And one, if you build to stock, it's for example, when your company is doing many microphones, and you sell them based on demand on Amazon. So you build those microphones. Uh, and another example is that when you make in complex cars and you configure them based on order. Uh, and another example is a c complex uh, industrial equipment that is uh, engineered based on the requirements of customer. So you can think about these three use cases and the manufacturing process will be different in each of these three specific use cases. But this is how you can classify it. So based on the each of these requirements, the, the process will be different. So in one, where you will be building to stock, you will have a more or less a standard design that you will be building all the time and you will optimize your process. So when it will be completely custom engineering project to build something, it will be different project. But what is common between all of them that you will need to have this recipe. Uh, of the parts and the relationships and related information. And that's what the bill of material is about. So it can look mm -hmm. slightly different in all cases. The process around can be slightly different. 
depends on how many contractors you will be using, you will also get it different. But fundamentally, it will be very similar things, and many, and that's why manufacturing companies are struggling with these problems a lot because for them, communication and uh, <coughs> process uh, optimization is one of those that important because when you have two systems working independently and two companies working independently, then the information is lost and their process is not optimal. So, so when, when, when we take um, the different processes that are happening at, uh, at a company, and then you, does OpenBUM then try and integrate the communication with the design and the manufacturing and the CRM? Does it try and integrate across? Yes, yeah. what, what OpenBOM does, it's first of all, create a data foundation. And second, is automating some of these manual tasks. So if you, you've been talking about CAD, so a typical design, you have your CAD files, and you need to create bill of materials. So in the traditional form, engineer will export data to Excel and send it using email. Very painful, and then the changes are coming and it needs to be extracted one mm. more time and manually copied to another place. So this is the first place where OpenBOM gives you a big advantage because we automate this process. So we extract data from CAD automatically using our integrations and we keep it in sync. So everything happens in CAD automatically come into OpenBOM. Everything that you do in OpenBOM is merged with the updates that's coming from CAD. So eliminating manual tasks, automating process. So now let's move forward. We manage uh, catalogs of all parts, also standard, also engineering. And we manage uh, the quantity on hand for small shop. They, know, they need to know how many parts do they have, and then they take an order. They need to know how many they need to order. So we create another uh, instance of what is called planning bomb or order bomb. So this planning bomb or order bomb, it's basically scaled bill of materials for number of units that you want to make. We automate this task. We automatically calculate how many parts are missing. Interesting. So, and then uh, this planning bomb is actually a view that allows you to see how many parts do you have and how many parts are missing. And then you're taking it in two ways. And one, you can say, if I need to have an, if I have an order of 100, I need to order this number of parts based on my planning bomb. But I can take it in reverse. And uh, many operational managers can ask, so how many units I can ship without ordering anything? It's also built on the information that we have. So we can run it in reverse in two things. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of decision point for manufacturing company. And then the last but not least, now we need to make purchase orders. So I'm taking, we're taking this planning bomb and automating creating of purchase orders. So you can think about planning bomb that requires, uh, that need to be split to 25, 30 orders for different contractors. So it somehow needs to be automated and sent out. And this is another place where we automate and we not requiring any copy paste operation because this yeah. is where mistakes are happening. Yeah. Look, I see, I see people in the evenings that doing some other job in manufacturing company in the evening, coming to website and ordering parts because that's, that's the way small shop works. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the way. So we create a data process that automated and connected. And that's what makes a uh, company more efficient. Yeah, I like how you explained it as you start with the data foundation and then you work on the getting rid of some of the, the tasks where there's also not only a lot of human labor involved, but a lot of human error involved. Absolutely. And then when you, when you learn how to, how to make this all seamless and frictionless process, more people can spend time being creative at doing their best work. I like how you explained how when you, when you take the CAD file and you move it over, into into Excel that when when not only do you have to then um, potentially have uh, uh, someone else from around the world when you when they take a look at it uh, uh, if there's been a change made then that Excel needs to be updated when they view it it's it's basically like starting at the data level of the CAD file itself Absolutely. and that's and that's, that's that's super crucial now. Okay, so now w with with the, with what you're doing with the with the bill of materials with this data as well as the automation processes, where do you see this now going? In you know, you talk we talked a little bit about the thirty years that kind of built up until this point. Where is it going from here? It seems like everything is moving to to cloud and making. Uh, 
putting our, our, our what we want to be processed into the cloud and doing like all the different services from there. This, is that part of Open Bomb's future That's, as well? You see, this is very technological explanation. Yes. So what I would like, it's more visionary explanation about where it will take us <coughs> based on something that you know. So if you these days go in to buy something, so where do you go? You go to Google, Mostly you go Amazon. to Amazon. Yeah, yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. so you said. So uh, think about manufacturing companies in 10, 15 years. They go to open bond like to Amazon. Because based on, you know, if you know the recipe, you know what you need. And if you know what you need, you can optimize. Mm. So mm. as an open bomb as a platform, can analyze information of many products we can make recommendation to people about what to buy and where to buy. If we manage vendors, we can help companies to choose right vendors. So that's the information that are intertwined, connected, and uh, uh, providing business value. So exactly like we absolutely no question the business value for us of Amazon going and figuring out where to buy the particular stuff because we know who is using it and who liked it, and what is the cost, and we, we know all this stuff. It's, it's almost natural for us. It's 10 years ago, it was not natural. 10 years ago, we've been going to the near, nearest shop, and we are asking opinion, yeah, yeah. what is this and is it needed? So today, we don't do it. Today, we, you know, I, I look people in the, in, the, in the store, going with the phones and checking against the phone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. manufacturing companies are the same, just they go in to transform in the um, in the in, in the network, you know, I would call it manufacturing network, where everyone is intertwined, interconnected, based on business relationships, and the role of Open Bomb will be to help them to operate in this uh, digital system. And then, it, when you when you give us this vision of 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 one being able to find a part that they desire for their for their manufacturing process, when is is it is it as simple as me having that be updated in my in my CAD file, and then me being able to see how much that part costs from Open Bomb as well, where you have a data set based on that part, how much it costs, where it's going to be sourced from, how that affects the model. Is this? Yeah, yes, and yes and no. Okay. First of all, for example, calculation and cost roll-up. It's even today simple with Open Bomb because we have calculation formulas, and we allow you to roll up cost, which by itself hard hard thing to do. But if you start thinking about transformation of entire system, you need to think uh, globally about existing relationships, and uh, this is where uh, the hard, the complicated changes will be coming because. You know, digitally, everything is simple. Mm, but uh, human, to human. human changes. Yeah. Like I was buying from John my entire life, and now I learned that I am overpaying twice to John. So what are we going to do about this? Yeah. So that's, that, that's the challenge. And so who's the new person that you'll be buying from? And who is the new company yeah. and how to organize it? This is where it comes yeah. all complicated. Just like, like, take a look on the changes that happening with some digital form of transportation, like Uber. Mm -hmm. Somebody is happy and somebody is angry. Like that's, that's the most complicated thing, is a, is a change. And change will happen in manufacturing companies because the relationships will be broken and some relationships will be optimized and that will, will drive the change. That's why it will not happen overnight. Yeah. Although you can say technology is available. Yes, technology is available, but it will take change and some of these changes will take time. But no, no question it will come. It's very interesting. The human relationships across the world component has so much to do with with this, and and I think we talk so much about technology, technology and software that um, sometimes we forget about the human component, which is so uh, emotional and so um, uh, it doesn't operate on on com on computer processors and binary. Yeah, there, yeah. Uh, there are two things that fundamentally very hard to change. The first is the uh, people, uh, and the second is the business models. <laughs> so if somebody is <laughs> operating in a particular business model, it's very hard to change. For example, there are companies that sell in parts, and they sell in parts from a book. And believe it or not, even today they are thinking like a book. 
So, <laughs> and the, again, those guys, the, those people will have to change because somebody will start in buying and consuming and optimizing. Yeah. And it's not because they own the book and because before somebody was buying this part from this book yeah, yeah. because the book is the only thing that he had on this table. So that's, that's where he was buying. And versus now when you, add, like you were saying earlier, you're, when you're adding a component, it's not, f it's from a catalog, a digital catalog, and you know where potentially it's being sourced from, what the human relationship is, where that's being sourced from, adding that change in the CAD file directly to the bill of materials, you know, this is a very, very important. I, ca I can give you an example. Today, when you want to go to airport from your home, and you run your Waze or Google Maps, it can tell you that typically if you want to be there at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, you need to leave your home at this time. Yes. Because we know how much traffic it will take. We know all these details. Yes, yes. Now think about manufacturing company want to do something and having more or less similar, like imagine this. Correct. I'm trying to build this and I'm using this component and yes. I know this component had a failure rate of 5% uh, under certain conditions and yes. you know, yes, yes. many things. Yes, this is, this is a very good comparison of when a manufacturing company wants to make a decision, kind of like when we want to go to a certain destination, how can we optimize that process for that manufacturing company with the relationships with all of the data foundation? This is very cool, Oleg. Um, we're very excited to see the future of, of Open Bomb and, and thank you for teaching us about it. We really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on to the show. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate you. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Bill of Materials, start talking to more people about it. Start talking to more people about what it's like to actually manufacture goods like this and the data foundation behind it. Huge shout out to Kofes. Kofes's links are below as well. Congress on the Future of Engineering Shop Software, check them out. And go and build the future, everyone. Support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. All our links are below as well. Manifest your dreams into the world. We will see you soon. Much love. Peace.